This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 947 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you, one day at a time. Greetings, horse people. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is an excerpt from the Driving Radio Show, where Dr. Wendy Ying schools her co-host Glenn the Geek on ulcers in horses. And we'll get right to our tip after this important message from Equestrian Collections. Well, hello everybody, Coach Jen here from Horse Radio Network, and I am here with Debbie from Equestrian Collections, and she is here with the EquestrianCollections.com product of the week. Take it away, Debbie. Hi, Jen, and thanks for letting me have the opportunity to tell your listeners about a new tall boot that is different and really, really great. The Tough Rider Wellesley Tall Boots. The reason that these are are so great is that that leather is when you hear butter soft this is butter soft i mean when you stand them up they flop over because they're <laughs> so soft and so they're just I, I just can't even hardly describe how comfortable these are and how they fit to your leg they really do and the, to top it all off the footbed actually has support yay so yeah so you can actually walk in these things. So they are so, they're really quite different. They, because of the very soft, buttery leather, it adheres to your, to your leg, um, you know, like almost like you don't have a boot on. And you can walk in it because they actually have good support in the foot. Um, they come in a lot of different sizes, and we do have the size chart up there. Some of the... Um, and the, be careful with the uh, the width because they comes in slim, regular, and wide calf. So there's a lot of different sizes that can go uh, for a lot of different people with this boot. And when you get one and you get it on, you will. I mean, it just makes your leg look taller, makes your leg look slender. It it it's just it's just so soft and comfortable. These and these are the a really pretty elegant design. They've got a uh, punched toe cap, even though they are a dress boot, not a field boot. And they've mm-hmm. got the um, they've got the spur rests that are on either side of the full length zipper in the back. Mm-hmm. Uh, no uh, no unsightly elastic to to look funky. And they've mm-hmm. got the nice big heavy duty snap at the top, so the zipper tab stays flat where it belongs. And then I really like the really cute little detail at the top of the boot where the where the that little flap of leather would normally go. And it's just got yeah. a cute little swirly detail up there. So they're very classy, but still formal. They're not um, they're not too awfully sporty. So you could be wearing these in formal classes as well as informal and every day at that price point. Let's hear it for $400 <laughs> boots that only cost two fifty one ninety five. So go to equestriancollections.com today and you can search in the search bar, Tough Rider, all one word, Wellesley Tall Boots. And the Wellesley is spelled a little bit wonky. It's W-E-L-L-E-S-L-E-Y. But I'm sure if you just put in their Tough Rider Tall Boot, you're going to get a big long list and the Wellesley will be on that list. So mm-hmm. worry not. Oh, that was funny. All right. Well, thank you for stopping by, Dr. Yang. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. My job here is done. <laughs> Anyways. All right, what are we talking about? <laughs> okay, so today we're talking about stomach ulcers in horses. So that's a, a big topic. We all know about stomach ulcers in horses. So I wanted to go over a little bit more about them and how you can treat them uh, with, uh, instead of just drugs, you can do more management strategies. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons why I'm doing it on this today too is because um, I wanted to thank triple crown nutrition and the United States pony clubs, because they awarded us a grant for a thousand dollars, um, so that we could, uh, spend more time like doing segments like this and bringing you more information on the driving radio show. So this, uh, I, so thanks to them. 
And this one is also going to feature one of their products that you could use for management. And it's a product that I use myself. So, um, Glenn, do you know what causes stomach ulcers in horses? Having to deal with their owners. Yes, that's true. Oh. Stress. <laughs> okay. Because what thinking. causes what causes ulcers in people? People, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, right. Stress. Having to deal with other people. <laughs> <laughs> because st- stress releases um, your internal uh, corticosteroids, right? So steroids hurt. So and also that being said, also if you give your horses external steroids, that decreases mucus production in the in the tummy. Along with NSAIDs, like for people, we use Advils or aspirins. In horses, you know, it's very common to give bute. That can cause stomach ulcers. Um, There are some newer NSAIDs that we can use, but they all do damage the stomach. Uh, Also, do you know 90% of racehorses have ulcers? Oh, yes, I have heard that that's, before. Yeah, yeah, that's really a common thing that we hear. And that's because exercise um, also increases the acid production in the stomach. And when they're running, they're um, flight animals, right? So we all know you shouldn't work a horse right uh, after they eat, right? Because to digest stuff, they're in their um, uh, parasympathetic Can state. I ask you quick, quick uh, on that topic, yeah. how, how long after? Well, you want them to have time to digest, right? So a half an hour, an hour? So, yeah, like if they eat a lot of grain, maybe an hour is more appropriate. But if they eat two cups of grain, then maybe yeah. half an hour? Or if they're just on hay, if they only eat hay or grass, you can, you can um, ride them right away. You know, you, the big grain meal is what's the problem because um, when they're eating, they have to divert blood to their tummy, right? So they can get their tummy to work. When they're exercising, their blood gets diverted to their muscles. So then everything just sits there in their tummy. That's why they're more prone to colic when, they're, when they've eaten a big meal. And horses aren't used to eating gr- big, huge grain meals. That's something that we've done. Like a horse out in the wild, they just eat grass all day. You know, so two high grain meals a day is actually what can contribute to ulcers. And in fact, in pigs, um, commercially raised pigs, they have a very high incidence of ulcers because they get, you know, as much grain as we can put in them because they have to grow fast. So that increases their acidy tummy. Uh, Also, when they exercise, you know, in racehorses, what's so cool about that is like the gallop it moves all, all their organs back and forth like a bellows. That's how they can breathe so well. That's how their oxygen intake can be increased. But when you, with the tummy moving like that, the tummy's also moving. And the, there's a glandular part of the stomach. And then there's a, a part that doesn't have any mucus on it, right? It's just kind of uh, the mucus protects the the, the stomach from the, the um, acid. So when the acid splashes up, it can hit the unprotected part of the stomach. That's why a lot of times you see ulcers in the top part of the stomach. And that's why you see ulcers more often in exercising horses. Like horses that never run around, what are the chances anything's going to splash in there? (laughs) Right, right, right. right. Um, So those are the risk factors for ulcers. Uh, Also, there um, is hindgut acidosis which is a new topic. Well, not new, but some people haven't heard about that. But have you heard about hindgut acidosis, Glenn? Only because we do health segments on horses in the morning and it's come up. Oh, okay. So, so what that is, the hindgut is the cecum and the colon, okay? And the cecum is like the rumen in the cow. That's where the, the hay that they eat gets digested by good bacteria and they turn it into nutrients, so, so people and dogs, you know, with simple stomachs, we don't really have that. So we can't, um, we can digest some fibers, but like we don't eat hay and grass. We can't get nutrients from that. So the way that um, grazing animals get nutrients from that is they use the bacteria in their cecum or their rumen, and they break down the cell wall of the plants, and then they use that, um, the fermentation from the bacteria 
and the plants, and they use that as energy. So those bacteria that do that in the hindgut are very sensitive to the pH. So you can see if you have like a very low pH, which means very acidy stomach, when that um, when that juice goes down into the and the food particles go into the hind gut, that is already contributing to more acid. And unfortunately, it kills the good bugs back there, but the bad bugs like acid. And so the bad bugs grow more, and the bad bugs also produce acid, like lactic acid, which we all know is bad. That's a, a chemical that is involved in tying up. So it's a, it's kind of a vicious cycle. And also, the dead bugs, um, the dead microbes, produce endotoxins. Um, so some of the risk factors for hindgut acidosis are also high starch diets. Because what's going on in the simple stu- in the stomach in the front, their regular stomach like ours, you know, if you have lots of like just two scoops of omeline one hundred goes into the tummy, right? So that causes all the bad things I just talked about. Then they can't have digested all those starches in the amount of time it takes to get to the cecum. So even more undigested starch goes into the hindgut. Mm. causing, okay. you know, more um, damage to the bacteria. So the things you can do to stop this are, what do you think? Well, feed uh, low, uh, smaller meals more often. Yeah. And uh, more turnout and more hay. Right. Right? So uh, also, if you, can't, if you can't do that, like I lived in California, there was no way we couldn't have more turnout. Right. And more hay. I mean, we could, but you needed to be a gazillionaire. (laughs) (laughs) So we had to do what we had to do. Um, So one of the things we did in California was feed a chopped forage. Um, So it was very common for horses to get either alfalfa pellets or a chopped hay um, product to supplement their their hay that they're eating so that we didn't have to feed them lots of grain. And uh, Triple Crown makes a great forage called alpha locks okay so it's chopped alfalfa but in in the old days they used to call it uh i'm going blank now what they used to call it but it was like chopped alfalfa with molasses poured all over it so it was like cotton candy the horses loved it that is probably not a good thing to use anymore so (laughs) because that's all starch but this is a chopped alfalfa with um additional probiotics and prebiotics added to it along with omega-3 fatty acids and L-carnitine. So uh, one of the things that alfalfa can do, I know that a lot of people are afraid to feed alfalfa. I bet you didn't want to feed alfalfa in the beginning with your pony, right? Right, right. Because you say, oh, it'll make him crazy. It'll kill him. Yeah, exactly. Well, it does have high protein, but it actually doesn't have tons of sugar in it. It doesn't have tons of starch. So it's actually a very good feed for horses because it has a lower starch. But also the calcium in alfalfa also buffers the gut. And your pony, I mean, we were sure that your pony had ulcers, right? Yes, we were. Because yep. he was so stressed out. Another interesting thing to add is uh I don't pre-bi- think he does anymore, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's pretty fat. Uh, but they add prebiotics. So prebiotic, um, do you know the difference between prebiotics and probiotics? You know, I've had this explained about 100 times, and, and oh. I'm still kind of iffy. So go ahead. Okay. Well, um, probiotics are the whole live microbes, right? So like lactobacillus is in, you know, uh, yogurt, right? So when you're eating that, you're getting live culture. That's how they call it. Prebiotics are components of the bacteria. So uh, in this feed, they add mano oligosaccharides. And that is a little molecule that comes from the cell wall of the yeast rather than the whole body of the yeast. It's just a piece of it. And the reason that that's important is because, uh, you know, I can't help it, but my molecular biology geekness is coming out. Um, the, pre- the prebiotics are really cool because they act like um, 
they stick onto the receptor sites of the cell so that bad bacteria can't stick on there, like E. coli, um, salmonella, clostridium. Those bacteria all get into your body by going through your gut and then attaching itself with a certain receptor to the outside of the cell. And then they take over the cell. That's like uh, the lock they use to get into the door. The prebiotics have the same shape key, you mm -hmm. could say, and it sticks on there. And so it takes up that receptor. So then the, the salmonella or the clostridium can't get in. So okay. then you just poop it out. Got it. So that, that's what a prebiotic is. And that's really good because uh, it stimulates your immune system and, and helps fight any bacterial infection you're getting. Many people think that leaky gut syndrome is because of, uh, you know, inflammatory mediators and then letting the bacteria get in. So this helps to, can, this is why they call it gut conditioner. That's what they mean by that. I know when I was on uh, antibiotics for almost a year for my Lyme when it was really bad, I had yeah. to take all kinds of probiotic stuff for my stomach because I was on antibiotics for so long. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Because you had killed off all the good bacteria in there. Right. But right. E. coli and salmonella, clostridia, they're always there. You know, you can't kill those. And so then you you needed those prebiotics and probiotics. Right. Um, another thing that they do is... Um, uh, they increase the surface area of your gut where absorption takes place. So then uh, if you have skinny horses, this is really good because you know how you feed horses, like when with you, you had your pony in the beginning, you could feed him a ton, but he just wasn't utilizing it. He didn't have that surface area because he hadn't eaten in so long. Uh, another thing that this product has is omega-3 fatty acids, which I don't need to get into that. Those are like awesome. Everybody loves omega-3 fatty acids. They reduce inflammation. Um, they, uh, also help, uh, bring oils to the gut. So it helps things pass. Um, but you know, if you have an old arthritic horse that's on butte all the time, causing your ulcers, maybe if they have some, uh, natural anti-inflammatories, you can reduce your amount of NSAIDs to keep them comfortable. And then the last thing that is really important in this, uh, chop forage is L-carnitine and L-carnitine is like my favorite molecule because, um, and I take this myself because, um, you know, I love to eat but I don't want to get fat <laughs> and L-carnitine <laughs> speeds up your fat. You just spoke for 90% of the population. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I love butter. I can't help it. Me too. <laughs> so I remember sitting in my Jeez. molecular biology <laughs> class and hearing about L-carnitine and it's actually a catalyst to take the fat in your bloodstream and push it into your mitochondria. Your mitochondria is your intracellular organism that metabolizes fat, Right. So if you speed up the, the reaction, the fat reaction, <laughs> you can burn more fat. So for, for years and years, I've taken L-carnitine. Um, but besides just helping your fat metabolism, it also helps your liver because when you get uh, overloaded with um, sugars and fats, your liver stores that, right? So, so, uh, so sometimes you have like cushionoid ponies that also have fatty liver syndrome. So this can help reduce the amount of uh, free, free fat in your blood. Uh, also, L-carnitine increases serotonin and dopamine, and those in people we know are an antidepressant. Um, also, if you can eat a lot of fat and you don't get as fat, that makes you happy too. So I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, it also increases your energy and it helps with stress management. Um, and then the best thing, which Dr. Kyle loves to point this out, it increases your, it's better for your nerve health. Your brain is made of fat, right? So you can't just go on a no fat diet or take things to get rid of the cholesterol and fat in your, in your blood. You need fat. It co the fat coats your nerves and it also, um, you know, is a big part of, of your, the stability of your brain. So, uh, L-carnitine and people we use for Alzheimer's disease and also diabetic neuropathy. So, um, diabetic neuropathy is like, um, 
very similar to laminitis in horses because uh, the people can't metabolize sugar and then um, they get a sort of founder. And and because you've heard about that, right? Diabetics mm-hmm. that lose the, their right. limbs. Right. Um, and L-carnitine is shown to reduce the pain in people with diabetic neuropathy. Hmm. So. And that's all in, give the name of the, the feed again. That this is Triple about? Crown Alpha Lox. Triple Crown Alpha Lox. Triple Crown, I know we've used it. Matter of fact, when we first got my pony and you gave me the regimen of what we were supposed to feed, we fed mm-hmm. a Triple Crown feed. Mm-hmm. That was one of the feeds that we used was Triple Crown. We f- and uh, we found it. At a, fortunately, one of the local dealers had it here. Yeah, and it's really great because this is a... Um, you know, of course, if you have flaming ulcers, you need to talk to your veterinarian and you need to, you know, you can use omeprazole, you can treat it with herbs and Chinese medicine. Um, it, it, there's many ways you can treat it. This is like a product that you could use to um, use in conjunction with your treatments or as a preventative. And it's really easy to get from many dealers, right? I mean, you just had it right down the street. I think sometimes with um, our prevention, if I told you, oh, Glenn, you need, you know, mano oligosaccharides, omega-3 fatty acids, and L-carnitine, you'd be like, what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, say, and then well, guess what I would do? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So here it's all done for you, and it's also, um, it can help put weight on a skinny horse. You can use it for a lot of different reasons, not just the ulcery horse. But uh, I think if in our horse population, we have such a high number of horses with ulcers that it would be good to just put them on preventative and increase turnout, increase hay, of course. But uh, I, I kind of, when I go see clients, I, I almost hesitate to say, oh, and he has ulcers, you know, because I feel like a broken record. And, you know, everybody says, I know he has ulcers, blah, 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 blah. You know, they want me to tell them something else. But that is like, I would say 90% of the horses that I look at, not only do they have a, uh, whatever their main issue was, their underlying issues, always ulcers. Hmm. Interesting. So. Well, thank you for that, Dr. Ying. And of course, you can find Wendy at? DrWendyYing.com. Well, there you go. To listen to more tips on topics ranging from barn care, to websites for horse people, just go to horsetipdaily.com and look for the topics drop down menu on the left. And you can have all of your favorite horse radio network shows with you wherever you go with the free horse radio network app for iPhone and Android. Just go to your app store and search horse radio network. Download it today. It's quick, it's free, it's easy. And this podcast has been made possible today through the generous support of equestriancollections.com and listeners like you. Listeners like me, you ask? Well, yes. Folks like you who enjoy the great podcasts on Horse Radio Network can support your favorite programs by supporting our sponsors like EquestrianCollections.com and also by becoming an official auditor. For as little as a buck a month, you can help to support the Horse Radio Network programs and qualify for cool auditors-only perks. Learn more at Horsetipdaily.com. Just click on the Become an Auditor banner in the center of the page. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily. (laughs) 